Michael Schumacher won seven world championships during his illustrious Formula 1 career, but which was his best? This is the question we answer in this video, ranking his titles from worst to best based on the opposition he faced, how well he drove, how hard he had to work, the quality of his car, his consistency and all of the other factors that combined to make each campaign unique. Of course, all of these were great seasons for one of the best drivers of all time, but not all title victories are equal and our ranking reflects that. Let us know if you agree or disagree with our rankings in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. There's no question Michael Schumacher drove brilliantly on his way to a first world championship in 1994 and was a worthy world champion. After all, thanks to the two race ban he earned for ignoring a black flag at the British Grand Prix and two disqualifications, he effectively only had three quarters of the season to score points in. But this was a season overshadowed by the loss of Ayrton Senna, the title deciding clash with Damon Hill in the Adelaide finale and the constant controversies that, rightly or wrongly, engulfed the Benetton team. This makes it impossible to entirely divorce the negatives from the undoubted highs of the season, during which Schumacher established himself as a true superstar. While there were factors counting against Schumacher in 2003, notably the change in point system to give 10 for a win and just 2 less for second, this was arguably his messiest title campaign during what was one of the most unpredictable seasons of the 21st century. The bedrock of Schumacher's campaign was a run of 4 wins in 5 races in San Marino, Spain, Canada and Austria, while he only failed to score once after crashing out in sodden conditions in Brazil. But Schumacher almost threw away the championship in the Suzuka season finale, unfortunately timed rain in qualifying left him 14th on the grid, but his impatience in trying to recover resulted in a collision with Takuma Sato. He eventually came through to finish 8th, although teammate Rubens Barrichello's victory ahead of Kimi Raikkonen ensured Schumacher would have won this title even without that point. Schumacher was undoubtedly the class of the field in 2001, clinching his 4th world championship with 4 races to spare. The trouble is, he faced little real opposition. He comfortably outclassed teammate Rubens Barrichello, but old rival Mika Hakkinen was unable to produce the kind of form that took him to two titles before running Schumacher close in 2000 on anything more than an occasional basis. David Coulthard started promisingly in the other McLaren, but his challenge trailed off after a strong start that was assisted by Schumacher's setup troubles in Brazil and a wheel rim failure at Imola. Level on points with Coulthard after four races, he then eased to the title, taking first or second every time he finished, save for a subdued fourth place at Monza in the wake of the September 11th attacks. The combination of Schumacher and Ferrari was unstoppable during 2004, but while Schumacher's performances behind the wheel were peerless, winning 13 times in 18 races, the lack of a real title rival means there was little edge to this campaign and there was only ever going to be one winner. The second fastest car over the season, the BAR Honda with which Jensen Button took third in the championship, was never quite quick enough to defeat Ferrari. Even when things did go wrong for Schumacher, with his costly crash in free practice at Interlagos and then a messy Chinese Grand Prix, these came after he had clinched the title. For the rest of the season he drove superbly, only ever being beaten in a straightforward race by the inspired Kimi Raikkonen at Spa as his other second place to Barrichello at Monza came after recovering from a first lap spin. Along the way he also delivered his famous four-stop victory in the French Grand Prix at Manicourt. While there were moments during 2002 when Williams and McLaren appeared to pose a genuine threat, Ferrari and Schumacher were consistently strong. Schumacher finished all 17 races in the points as Ferrari set new standards for reliability as well as pace, never finishing off the podium and only once dropping as low as third in Malaysia where Ralph Schumacher led home Juan Pablo Montoya in a Williams 1-2. So dominant were Schumacher and Ferrari that it led to crisis talks and some extreme suggestions for rule changes, with admittedly more mild changes eventually made for 2003. This was a crushingly effective season for Schumacher, where he showed just how far ahead of the rest he was.
Schumacher's 2000 World Championship has to be considered his most important because it ended Ferrari's 21-year wait for a driver's title. He also had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with great rival Mika Hakkinen to take it, clinching the crown with a race to spare after defeating the Finn in an epic Japanese Grand Prix, a win Schumacher rates as his greatest. Despite there being no last round title decider, this was a classic battle, with momentum swinging between Hakkinen and Schumacher. McLaren unreliability allowed Schumacher to take an early lead by winning the first two races, followed up by defeating Hakkinen in another great battle at Imola. But Hakkinen regained ground as, during a five-race spell in the middle of the season, Schumacher finished just once when he won in Canada. An exhaust-related suspension failure put him out in Monaco, an engine failure in France, then first corner collisions in Austria and Germany left him on the back foot. But after Hakkinen took a six-point lead with back-to-back -back wins at the Hungaroring and, after that legendary overtake, Spa, Schumacher simply proved unbeatable on his way to sealing the crown. The brilliance of Schumacher's 1995 campaign is too often forgotten taking what was clearly not the strongest car to nine victories and clinching the World Championship with two races to spare by winning the Pacific Grand Prix without any of the tragedy or controversy that overshadowed his first Benetton title. Schumacher might have even sealed the title earlier but for being wiped out at Silverstone and Monza by mistakes from Damon Hill. A crash in damp conditions while leading after switching to slicks on a drying track at Imola aside, Schumacher had a superb season in a Benetton B195 that took time to get working after the team switched to Renault engines. Despite only taking four pole positions, Schumacher was formidable in the races and even managed to win from 16th on the grid at Spa. Just to underline how good his campaign was, when Schumacher tested the 1995 Ferrari at Estoril after the end of the season, he was far faster than regular drivers Jean Alessi and Gerhard Berger had ever been there. He later suggested he would have won the World Championship more easily in a Ferrari, meaning perhaps the Benetton was really only the third best car of the season. Well that's our ranking of Schumacher's titles, but if you think differently, don't forget to let us know why in the comments below.